Um, I just want to take a minute to acknowledge my um, akua, my aumakua, my kupuna, my ohana, um, the keli ipio and the kuamo ohana. Um, Aloha board members. My name is Jennifer Lena Ala Slightholm. Mahalo for being here and for giving us this opportunity to address you directly today regarding the conservation district use application for the proposed 30 meter telescope on Mount Nakea. What a journey this has been. Time of awakening and many painful lessons. I always believed that life was simple and people behaved with integrity and truth and I could use simple common sense when faced with a decision needing to be made but I guess I lived in a bubble. Things are complicated. You have corporations, lawyers, financial backers, and even some willing to sever or compromise their relationship and kuleana to our aina for money. Forgetting that money is temporary, but I'm wide awake now. Looking at the TMT project, in order for them to be issued a permit in a conservation district, certain criteria must be met as outlined in HER 15. 13-5-30C, which we refer to as the eight criteria. At the conclusion of the contested case, it was clear based on the testimony and evidence presented that the applicant did not meet all the criteria. The university has affirmed the significance and importance of Mauna Kea as a burial ground and living temple, a vahipana, a cultural anchor. I'm not going to go into a a lot of the things because it's been covered before, but I'm looking at criteria eight and it states the proposed land use will not be materially detrimental to the public health, safety, and welfare. In the comprehensive management plan, the first section details our genealogical connection to Mauna Kea and discusses PICO. In this comprehensive management plan, Antipua Kanako Ole explains that, and I quote, when we understand the three PICO of the human anatomy, we may begin to understand how they manifest in Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea as the fontanel requires a pristine environment, free of any spiritual obstructions. Mauna Kea as the umbilicus ensures that those who descend from Wakea, our heaven, Papahanao Moku, our land base, and Ho'ohoku Kalani, the mother of constellations, continue to receive the physical and spiritual benefits entitled to those who descend from sacred origins, end quote. Also included in the CMP under Executive Summary 1, it states, Mauna Kea is probably one of the most significant cultural and astronomical sites in the world. For the Hawaiian people, Mauna Kea is their cultural connection or pico, their umbilical cord. To Papa and Wakea, it is the beginning and the end. For the astronom astronomical community, Mauna Kea is the scientific umbilical cord to the mysteries of the universe. It is the goal of that comprehensive management plan for the University of Hawaii management areas that these two cultures coexist in such a way that is mutually respectful and yet honors the unique cultural and natural resources of Mauna Kea. The Board of Land and Natural Resources has likewise shared the belief that these diverse interests can be accommodated recognizing that Mauna Kea's summit area is unique and one of the most special places on earth. In Native Hawaiian culture, Mauna Kea is a focal point of spiritual and cultural significance, a home of deities, a place of spiritual connection with one's ancestors, history, and the heavens. To astronomers worldwide, Mauna Kea is exceptional in its quality for astronomical observation. Mauna Kea, more than any other place presents the stewards of the land with an inexorable duty to conserve, protect, and preserve this unique and most special resource. While many people in the community believe that science and culture can coexist, they also shared a similar concern that the general community, including the astronomical community, did not really understand or appreciate how significant Mauna Kea was to the Hawaiian people. This lack of cultural sensitivity engendered anger, hurt, and distrust towards the University of Hawaii for not being a good steward of Mauna Kea. Cultural understanding and information to appreciate Mauna Kea from a cultural perspective will assist in avoiding miscommunications or unintentional disrespect. Approving the proposed project after thousands and thousands of Hawaiians and non-Hawaiians alike have shown their opposition by standing and holding 24-7 vigil on the Mauna, taking to the streets in Waikiki and marching, 
and dozens of Kia'i being arrested will not only continue to engender anger, outrage, and distrust, but will be an intentional disrespect after clear communication by the people has and continues to be made, as we've seen by the number of Kia'i that showed up to these hearings. So it is contradictory to the intentions asserted in the CMP. It's not that they are looking to coexist or earn trust. It's them saying the right things, all the while their actions are in direct conflict of this. If the proposed project is approved, it will cause anger and outrage in a large amount of the public. My family has lost so many of our mo'olelo because of Christianity and colonization, generations of indoctrination, and to erase a space or to desecrate a space where my, myself and my keiki can exercise our birthright would be perpetuating the cultural genocide and erasure. We need to preserve these spaces for our keiki to be able to live and be Hawaii in perpetuity, meaning for infinite generations to come. I... was that daughter that Mehana talked about arrested with my mother while we stood in a circle praying for the Mauna. I have been arrested twice and I can personally speak to the violence and trauma it has inflicted on me. It had adverse impacts and has been detrimental not only to my health, safety, and welfare, but to my ohana as well as they have gone through the emotional, psychological, as well as financial struggles right along with me. There seems to be a double standard in that the university would include so much about religious and cultural practices and beliefs in their numerous reports and statements, yet during this contested case hearing, there was great effort in not allowing this to be set as an issue, and although allowed during the case was given less weight than the eight criteria. It would be negligent and irresponsible for the board and the university to disregard the above mentioned as not being detrimental to public health, safety, and welfare when clearly it is. These criteria are not discretionary. With that said, criteria eight has not been met. And I look at management practices. Having a mandatory hour-long cultural sensitivity course is insufficient. There is a blatant double standard again. Here we have to prove that we are cultural practitioners or that we qualify as Native Hawaiians by tracing our genealogy back to a certain year in order to have some sort of standing or even come to the table in this discussion and arena, yet those connected with the project, other telescopes, and in management capacities who spend significant amounts of time on the Mauna are only required to have an hour-long course. Although it states that management efforts have evolved and developed significantly over the last 15 years under OMKM and references the auditor's report, which says OMKM has addressed many of their recommendations, such as developing and implementing management plans for Mauna Kea's natural, cultural, and historic resources, OMKM and Kahuku Mauna have yet to address numerous action items related to cultural practices, and the West Hawaii consultation sessions to discuss these action items have been canceled twice. First meeting scheduled for May 18th, 2017, and second attempted meeting set for June 22nd, 2017, both canceled and no notice from Lucella Ruddle as to a new meeting date. These action items were originally introduced and opened for comment in May of 2015. Mitigation measures. Merriam Webster defines mitigation as to cause to become less harsh or hostile. There has been so much discussion from pro-TMT people about monies for STEM programs and education. What the TMT fails to recognize is that money doesn't mitigate desecration. It doesn't mitigate compromising our core values of oneness with our aina and our genealogical connection to it. When I think of core values, I think of the acronym KALO, Kuleana, Aloha, Lokahi, Ohana. And the Lokahi triad, man, God, and nature, We are all connected and we are not separate from one another. It's not and never has been about anti-science or anti-education, but it's choice of place. So I have to agree with Mr. Ng in this instance. Yes, the stakes are high. So I urge you to deny the permit because once this area is altered, there's no turning back and it cannot be undone. Mahalo. Thank you. I don't have any questions, but I'd also like to um, 
a request for a stay of execution um, pending appeal. Mahalo.